Okay, welcome back to the next genetics lesson. Um, I'm going to try to get through at least uh, three of these, maybe four tonight, because they go pretty quickly. Uh, the This is for the Dutch locus point for what we uh, have in the string here, DU. Now, DU stands for the Dutch. It is also a breed, and it's, and it's uh, a breed of its own, and it has its own... Uh, locus point okay so this if you're working in Dutch whether it be black chocolate lilac uh, or blue this is what we're going to be talking about okay so we're going to kind of run through this and then I'm going to show you how to do the genetic how these all work together in coordination to produce those four different colors um, of black blue chocolate and lilac and but to start off with we have to at least get the dutch pattern to show up in our rabbit uh, du uh, with a capital d there's not going to be any dutch advancement of the color meaning there's not it doesn't get to it again it is the dominant allele at this locus point if it if the dominant allele is present in either of the two locations of the locus point there we're not going to have a dutch rabbit okay not going to be there. Uh, if we have du with this lowercase, we're going to advance that Dutch gene or that allele. Now, as we just talked about in the silvering locus point, the SI locus point, as in some other locus points, you must have two copies <clears throat> of the most recessive allele for the the pattern, the color to present in your rabbit. So just as we had done in before, I've done the, th the combination of three. We only have two, two alleles to work with. We know that, that uh, a rabbit must possess two of them. And so the, these are the only three combinations that we can have out of our rabbit. We could have two dominant uh, alleles, which we're not going to get any Dutch. We could have one dominant, one recessive. We're not going to get any Dutch. And if we get two copies of the recessive, we're going to get our Dutch pattern, which is represented generally by a band around the neck and usually uh, on the forehead, a line down the forehead. Now, don't get this confused with what you may know as Vienna rabbits that are what we call Vienna marked rabbits. Um, now, Vienna marked rabbits are marked by the V locus way down here on the end. Okay. Just because Vienna presents in that fashion in certain cases, okay? It, Vienna has nothing to do with Dutch, and Dutch has nothing to do with Vienna. So if you have a Dutch rabbit, it, it, it's very likely. Now, there, there are cases, I'm sure, that you could import Vienna into Dutch, but we're not even, we, it's not going to be showable. It's not going to be usable. It, it's not, not very... Uh, smart on a breeding standpoint to mix Vienna in with a non-Vienna color, okay? And we'll get to that later on in Vienna, but but remember this, that Dutch, this Dutch locus point has nothing to do with Vienna or vice versa, okay? It's just how the, the rabbits tend to present. Now, let's say that we do have our, our Dutch color. Well, from what we've learned in previous locus points, we're going to go back here to the B locus. Now, we know at the B locus, that determines whether our rabbit is black or chocolate. Capital B being dominant, and lowercase b being the recessive. So let's say we have our Dutch rabbit, we've got our Dutch rabbit, and let's say that the two alleles at the B locus, <coughs> excuse me, are both lowercase b's, which is the recessive, meaning chocolate, and we have two copies of those there, we're going to get a chocolate Dutch. If we get one dominant, which is the capital B for black, and one chocolate, because the black is more dominant than the chocolate, the, the black is going to present in the color, and we're going to get a black Dutch rabbit. <clears throat> and the same likewise, if we have two copies of the dominant black, uh, that's we can we're going to get a black rabbit, a black Dutch rabbit. 
So let's take this a step further, let's say. Okay, let's say that we have a, a, a black, well, we'll start with chocolate. Let's, let's say we have a chocolate Dutch rabbit, okay? And what we learned at the D locus is, is that there's two, two alleles there, capital D for the dominant, which means no dilute, and lowercase d standing for dilute, which means you're going to get the dilute version of your base color from point B or our locus point B. So we have our chocolate Dutch. If, if we have two copies of the dominant allele there, which is no dilution, capital D's, we're still going to have a chocolate Dutch. If we have one capital D, one lowercase d, still no dilute, we're still going to have a chocolate Dutch. But if we were to get, let's say, Dutch plus the chocolate plus we get two copies of this recessive dilute, which means you're having to go a little ways to get there. But let's say that it happens, you're going to end up with a color called lilac Dutch, which lilac is the the uh, dilute color of chocolate. The same is true with a black Dutch. So a black Dutch will stay a black Dutch as long as there is a dominant D for no dilution at this locus point at D. Again, if we get two copies of the dilute allele in the string along with the, the black and the Dutch, we're going to end up with a blue Dutch. Okay, because blue is the dilute of black. So you can kind of see how things kind of fit together. And this is a great example in Dutch of how this, this locus point works with black to determine whether your rabbit is black based or chocolate based and then using the D locus for dilution on whether the rabbit is going to be a dense color or it's dilute color and and how it can affect and so in essence you can get out of these three locus points we can create four different colors just out of those three three locus points D U B and D okay so that's really awesome stuff let me grab you a rabbit that actually is not a Dutch rabbit she's actually a Vienna marked but I want to show you what a Dutch will normally look like and she's if you didn't know that she was a Vienna rabbit you may think that she was a Dutch uh, Dutch breed is actually a little bit quite a bit different than what I'm going to show you today um, but the markings on the Dutch will be very much very much similar so let me go grab her real quick okay so this is an example of the coloration you're going to get with a Dutch to an extent she's not a great example because this is actually a Vienna rabbit but I want to show you kind of the, the idea behind what Dutch looks like I don't have one I used to have several I just don't have any more um, in the Dutch and they come in occasionally into the rescue but um, um, I just don't have any right now but a Dutch is going to have this white band around the chest uh, generally across the back behind the head up underneath and then if I can get her to turn for me you, you'll get a white stripe here on the the forehead now the reason I know this isn't a Dutch is because a uh, this is Netherland Dwarf right here this is a, what we call Vienna marked and Netherland Dwarf and uh, so that's my first giveaway. The second giveaway that I know <coughs> just by looking at the color of that, and this happens a lot in Vienna's. Um, again, remember, Dutch is a breed, okay, of its own. Um, Vienna marked is a, is a color response uh, to a locus point. And so Vienna marked, you know, she's got a you know white front front paws here, which a lot of Dutch will have, but she's also got a white back foot, and uh, a lot of times uh, some Dutches won't may not have a perfect ring, or it may get narrow. You can see right here, this would be if this was a Dutch, 
This, this wouldn't be desirable. We want a nice, solid, wide ring all the way up and then nice, clean forehead and face. Um, but she, this is a sweet girl. I just got her out to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, again, not a Dutch rabbit. I'm sure there are people out there say, oh, that's not a Dutch. Well, I know it's not a Dutch. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the color looks like and how it presents in a Dutch rabbit, even though this is a Vienna. So anyway, just, and that's probably a little snippet for what you're going to see when we get to Vienna. Uh, some really interesting colorings and really interesting markings and, and how this is created uh, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to save all that good info for the V Locus. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, questions, anything like that good stuff. Check out all the other videos up to this point. And then we're going to run over into uh, Latino, uh, which is the pink uh, coloration that we see and pink eyes. And it's just, it's just very unique. It's, it's something you may see overseas a little bit more uh, in Europe. Um, it's not something you commonly see here in the United States. Uh, but it is out there, so we're going to talk about it and how it's created. You'll probably never see it, but if you do, you'll know what we're talking about.